Thank you. Failure has been described as succeeding at the wrong things. You know, we as a species are tri-dimensional. We are mental, physical, and spiritual. Your IQ is your intelligence quotient. It allows you to learn a skill and make a living. Your EQ is your emotional quotient. It allows you to practice the will and shape a life. And your SQ is your spiritual quotient. It plugs the hole in your soul. I honestly and fervently believe that IQ plus SQ plus EQ is the real you. But in an audience this size, odds are there are some people with my faith, there are some people with a different faith, there are some people with no faith, and there are some people who think they're too smart for faith. But as sure as the sun will rise tomorrow, there are three things I know. One, there is a God. Two, it ain't me. And three, it ain't you either. But like you, when I came to this country, I came to events like this to search for the totality of success, the complete package. And I learned some skills through varied speakers and their influence that allowed me to set some records that would probably never be broken in the arena of sales. Along the way, I mastered some of the way by looking at their lives and I understood some of the will with which they shaped their lives. And hopefully I'm a better husband and a better father because of that. But there was a knowing emptiness in the pit of my stomach when I left event after event, wondering why I was still hollow. And in an event like this, a man, a motivational speaker, gave a simple motivational affirmation. And it went like this. Lord Jesus, come into my life and become number one. Forgive me of my past mistakes and transform me into the kind of person you have destined me to be. Amen. the chains fell off. Now when I shared that affirmation, many of you applauded for the fact that I made a decision that day that forever altered my destiny. But in a place like this, at a time like now, there are many people looking at the dark doors of despondence, looking at the very chasms of hopelessness, wondering if that light is available for them. Let me repeat that affirmation for you. Lord Jesus, come into my life and become number one. Forgive me of my past mistakes and transform me into the kind of person you have destined me to be. An anonymous poet probably said it best when he said, when God wants to drill a man and thrill a man and skill a man, when God wants to mold a man to play the noblest part, when he yearns with all his heart to create so great and bold a man that all the world shall be amazed. Watch his wonders, watch his ways. How he ruthlessly perfects whom he royally elects. How he hammers him and hurts him and with mighty blows converts him into trial shapes of clay that only God understands. While he lives, his beseeching hands, his tortured heart cries. How he bends but never breaks when his good he undertakes. How he uses whom he chooses and with every purpose fuses him to let the splendor out. God knows what he's about. The time has come in our own nation, in our own lives. And like I said, when I'm done, some of you will disagree with me. And as Dr. Adrian Rogers put it so eloquently, you can apologize to me later. <laughs> I am unabashed, undiluted, unapologetic for this. Because in 1993, when I made that all-important decision, 
It literally transformed the way I could love that bride. I was now able to love her through the absolute eyes of a forgiving master. I was able to bless my son through the ordained divinity of someone who cares. Folks, I can talk all you need me to talk about success. But today, don't leave here without him. And I'll close by simply saying, our Father's God, from out whose hand the centuries flow like grains of sand, we stand together, united free, loyal to our land and thee. Thank thee for the era done, but trust only thee for the coming one. Jesus is real. Take him home today.